Welcome to today's video. Today's video is on English phonetics and phonology. Specifically, the content for our series is going to focus on English sound change. We're going to be discussing the minimal pairs. We're going to be looking at allophones. We're going to be looking at phonemes, um, some aspects of connected speech, such as assimilation, metathesis, elision, juncture, and a whole lot. Now, concerning the series of videos that are going to follow this season, I need you to take out your pen, take out your paper, and take note. Now, I will see you at the end of today's video. Bye. Introduction to English Phonetics and Phonology. Our focus will be on English sound change now before we go into um, what english sound change is all about we want to remind ourselves of phon what phonetics and phonology is you know trying to define and understand these two aspects of um, linguistic studies are there any differences are they similar at what point do they overlap which one of them deals with the concrete physical sounds which one of them deals with abstract rule-based system of sound in a particular language, you know, we'll try to remind ourselves of um, what these two aspects actually are. Thereafter, we'll go into trying to understand what a syllable is. It actually is a, a unit of pronunciation. It has a vowel. Uh, it could have some surrounding consonants at the beginning, at the end. We'll define it as trying to uh, examine how it is seen as the least amount of speech sound produced with a single breath pulse. Just trying to know what the syllable is. Thereafter, we'll move over to understanding the English syllable structure that is looking at the basic parts of the syllable. In other words, we'll focus on the phonetic nature of the syllable. Um, we'll try to understand that the parts are made up of the onset, the nucleus, and the coda. We'll also look at the phonological nature of the English syllable, and um, specifically what we refer to as the phonotactics of the English syllable, where we'll be looking at um, the fact that at the beginning we have a maximum of three consonants. At the end of the syllable, we have a maximum of four consonants. We'll look at all of that and try and understand the structure of the English syllable. Thereafter, we'll be looking at the English consonant clusters. Okay, trying to understand that two or more consonant sounds can occur together without an intervening vowel, either at the beginning or at the end of the syllable okay in the course of that we'll get familiar with um, the cluster formation the several cluster types uh, at the beginning of a sound or of a word and at the big at the end at the final position of a word and try to familiarize ourselves with cluster formation that uh that is often governed by certain rules Number four aspect of this series is what we refer to as the minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are identical in all three phonetic environments, but one. In other words, the words differ by only one sound in the same position. The words have, they have um, different unrelated definitions. So in the course of understanding minimal pairs, we'll discover that the purpose of minimal pairs is to provide insight into how sounds and meanings coexist. Thereafter, we'll move over to allophones and phonemes. In the course of our discussion, we'll um, have insight into the fact that phonemes are abstract mental units representative of sounds. They are not the physical sounds, they are just a category in the mind um, that is not yet physically articulated as opposed to allophones that are the different 
realizations of the phoneme. They are the variant sounds of a phoneme. Or, um, in other words, they are the different ways a phoneme can be pronounced. We'll look at all of these and get familiar with allophones and the phonemes, itemize their differences so that we can easily recognize them when we see them. Also, we'll be looking at aspects of connected speech. These are processes that occur during fast and connected speech. Okay, either this, these processes are um, changing a sound, or either a sound is being um, deleted or skipped, or, is, or sounds are being merged. These aspects of connected speech, they, um, they, they make it difficult to actually detect where one word or when one word begins and where one another word ends. These processes, they help show the difference between the speech of the adult native speaker of a language and a learner. There are several aspects that we will be looking at, some of, we, some of which are um, assimilation, okay, we'll be looking at um, when sounds assimilate to adjacent sounds, um, and we have insta instances of um, vowel assimilation, assimilation, consonant assimilation, um, coalescence, nasalization, and some other forms of assimilation, assimilatory processes. Also, we'll be looking at the process of elision or deletion, where a sound is elided during the course of um, fast and connected speech. Also, we'll be looking at um, the process of epithesis, which is the insertion of an extra sound. We'll also move over to the process of juncture, where we have the open juncture, the closed juncture, and where we'll be... Um, um, We'll be um, familiarizing ourselves with the fact that pause at the um, syllable boundaries can actually alter the meaning of words and phrases specifically. Also, we'll be looking at vowel linkage or liaison, where an extra vowel or the role, the role approximant is used to link an adjacent phrase. All of these we'll be looking at and um, they all involve English sound change. How sounds change because they are close to each other and what happens in the course of conversations. Thank you for listening. Watch out for our next video where we'll be looking at phonetics and phonology. Welcome back. Thank you for listening and for watching. Now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Watch out for our next video, which is going to be on the syllables. Bye.